Yes, we're welcome back to another video on the Big Steph channel, and today we're here to talk about the five things we learned from Arsenal's 4-1 victory against Bayer Leverkusen in our first game back at the Emirates to start the 24-25 massive season for Arsenal. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. We recently just passed 800. So first of all, thank you, and continue to hit the like button and show your support to the channel. So I'll catch you guys next. I'm really in my zone. All my niggas getting cheese like it's provolone. They ain't with us at the bar, no son, they'll never know. Even through trial and error, gotta keep yourself composed. Feel like me, no bitch, I'm chasing all my dreams. I could guys, like I said, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and join the family and help us on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Pushing for this goal every single day. Arsenal content is here. All things Arsenal on this channel, Arsenal reviews um post pre-match reviews um player content player breakdowns player comparison and interviews all here on this channel so don't forget hit the like button hit the subscribe button and join us on the road to 1000 subscribers so without further ado let's get straight into what the five things we learned from this game the first thing i must touch on because i've been giving him so much heat over these last couple of weeks is zinchenko zinchenko with the new number 17 on his back no back and looking ready and raring to go to be honest today in the first half in the minutes he did play, the 45 minutes he'd played. Looked pretty impressive. Scored a wonderful goal. Good strike from Zinchenko. Um, but overall, I think his overall play was good. Inverted really well. His passing was clean, crisp. No errors at the back, even though coming down to the back end of that first half, it looked like they were targeting Zinchenko on that left-hand side, I thought, to be honest. The way him and, him and Trossard was able to link up that left-hand side. Zinchenko looked really impressive, to be honest. Won his headers, won his duels. And going forward, he looked really, really good. I'm not going to go on the bridge and say, oh, Zinchenko is back. We need to give Zinchenko minutes and switch around my tune. However, I need to see this from Zinchenko on a consistent basis now. If Zinchenko could put together a run of form, I, I don't see him as our starting left back, especially over the likes of Calafiori or Urien Timber. However, if Zinchenko is going to be in and around this squad, probably coming into that left hand, left hand eight position, or maybe at left back the minutes he might get barring any injuries or just coming in for rotation purposes i'd like to see zinchenko put together a string of games where he's consistent because if we're going to like i keep saying on this channel if we're going to challenge on multiple fronts we're going to need multiple players to step up when their time comes so zinchenko i'll give you your credit because i've given you so much slack and i'm a man who likes to as much as dish it out give it always back zinchenko you had a really really good game today in the first half you played so credit to Zinchenko and you look ready to go. Let's hopefully you can take on this momentum and take on this form into the season. Secondly, I want to touch on that left-hand side because to be honest, we've been talking so much about this left-hand side and how we need to fix this issue if we're going to become a real strong, dominant, potent team. And I must say, the second thing I want to touch on is Deandre Trossard. And I think the Trossard disrespect must stop. You guys let me know in the comment section down below. Who would you start, Martinelli or Trossard? If you say Martinelli, not that I don't understand, I get it. But at the same hand, how can you deny a man who's been scoring goals for over a year now for the Arsenal Football Club, whether that be off the bench, on the bench, and today, again, overall game has been absolutely incredible. Today, his goal, like, like I was going to touch on. The composure and the way he settles himself. When that ball finds him in the box, he can easily swing his foot at it and probably get it blocked. Takes a little shifty touch, drops his man to the floor, slaps it top corner but not only that some of his ball rolls drag backs passes through the box little creative plays and drags here and there and he understands where he needs to be positioning wise defensively i think for me that left hand side sorry that left wing is leandro trossard's to lose going into the season martinelli must perform and must win it back from him but no doubt about it leandro trossard is the man that has that position right now and we see another 18 minutes today in under um, Trossard's belt. So Trossard, again, if this is the Trossard we get, <laughs> if this is the Trossard we're getting for another full consistent season, opposition defenses must look out. Leandro Trossard, a really good, tricky defender, really good skill, really intelligent player, and probably one of the best finishers in and around this club. Another good finish and another good goal for Leandro Trossard. And let's hope he can keep it up as well. Another player that is going to be very crucial in our title hopes. And the third thing I want to touch on from that first half really was Gabriel Jesus. And I did a video on this channel recently about the curious case of Gabriel Jesus. And in that video, I talked about 
is Jesus the man to lead the line to the start of the season. Now, we know Havertz at the back end of last season scored a lot of goals, even scored in this game as well. Havertz brings something different. Jesus literally can't bring, and that's that physical, tall striker, that uh, physical presence up top to win aerial duels, to hold off defenders, to just hold the presence against physical defenders. However, Gabriel Jesus is in form right now that I know we talk about it every preseason with Gabriel Jesus. He's in immense form going into the season. But I hope, let's just hope, and I feel have a feeling that Gabriel Jesus might have a massive season this season. A massive season. The way he's able to link up the player, shift out to the left, create off the left, as well as link up player, drop short. Gabriel Jesus is a player that we're going to need in this team. He takes his goal really well, gets it from a throw-in, runs 10 yards inside his own line, inside his own half. And just kept running and running and running and running and running. Cuts inside, slaps it bottom corner. What a wonderful finish. And Gabriel Jesus scores today. Scores against Man United. Scored in our opening game against um in preseason behind closed doors. He seems to have found that goal scoring rhythm back again. Gabby Jesus, please, please, buddy. If you stay injury free, we all know what you possess. We all know the quality you have. And we all know how good you can be for this side for Mikel Arteta and for Arsenal. So please, let's just hope Gabriel Jesus can stay fit because I think Jesus is probably one of our key players in this side. And I think, to be honest, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys would do in that number nine position. Would you start Jesus for the start of the season or would you start Kai Havertz? Both are in really good form. Both are playing really, really well. Both scored goals today. What would you do in terms of going up again that first game coming against Wolves? Let me know in the comment section down below. And the final thing I want to touch on, ladies and gentlemen, is the youngsters in this side. Enwineri and Miles Lewis Skelly. The more you see them playing in the squad, the more you see them getting very, very accustomed to it. For the fourth goal, Enwineri receives it from Thomas Partey brilliantly between the lines, takes it, drives forward with enthusiasm, with purpose, plays in Bukayo Saka, who, has, who does what Bukayo Saka does all the time and create chances. Probably one our creation monster, and they still don't understand the disrespect on Makayo Saka's name. The way he's able to take it, drop a drop a shoulder, be the man played in the box, and Kai Havertz gets on the end of it. But all of that comes because of Anwaniri's energy, the way he's able to receive the ball and drive with it. And I know I'm so like a broken record on this channel when I talk about driving with the ball. But to be honest, that's one of the key things and key abilities in football: penetration. If you have players who are pen who could penetrate the defense, whether that be with the pass or with their ability to dribble and drive forward with the football, you will always have a dangerous attack. When we split the lines and we have players like um Odegaard, like Saka, like Declan Rice when he gets in that number eight position, and like Enwineri who like to drive with the football, even adding Melzo with Skelly in there. It is brilliant to watch. Always brilliant to watch as a fan and brilliant to watch probably as a manager. When you see that you're able to have that other layer of dynamism to your team. And I think the way Enwineri is able to have that low center of gravity, turn, beat his man, and drive with the football, all credit to Enwineri. He looks more and more comfortable every time I see him. But today was a really difficult test for Miles Lewis Skelly, playing in, um, coming on to the last 20 minutes, played in a very, very young back line. Yes, we considered a goal coming from his side, but other than that, inverts very well. Always shows very real confident on the ball. Always shows for it. Really, really um enthusiastic to get on the ball. Even did a turntable on Granite Jacket today, a roulette on Granite Jacket today in midfield. No, I know there wasn't a lot of tackles going in. It wasn't too much physical of a game. But when you see the players coming in, and even in front of a massive full stadium of at the Emirates, it's still a massive pressure, especially for a young player to go in there and impress not only the fans and not only the players he's playing with. But the manager, like that's still a massive thing for a 17-year-old to do, for these both 17-year-olds to do. And to see Enwaneri and Lewis Kelly continue to improve game after game after game, especially as the opponents and the level keep stepping up and up and up, I give credit to these players because it wasn't, it wasn't a, a very easy game we played today. We played against the German double champions, one undefeated in the Bundesliga, undefeated domestically in the cup as well. I only lost one game all year, and that's in the Europe, Europa League final. We played against a really good team today. Let's not, let's not be fooled, ladies and gentlemen. Played against a really, really good, drilled, organized team. And to come out um, with a 4-1 victory at home is really, really impressive. And to see Lewis Skelly 
and Enwiniri showing their quality and being a part of this is really, really fun to see and really, really enjoyable to see because there's been a big thing going around the club about youngsters breaking through in this squad and why Arteta doesn't promote youngsters. And what I've always been able to say and what I've always said on this channel is it's not just giving minutes to players just because you want to give out minutes. We're pushing for something massive here. And at the same time, we want to hold our manager to a certain standard in terms of winning trophies. We have to hold we have to hold the players to the same standard. And we can't just be bringing in young players just because we want to bring through young players. The players have to be up to level. And from these two players, from what we've seen in terms of Lewis Skelly and Enwaneri, I can definitely see them getting minutes in and around the team, especially Ethan and Waneri. But you guys in the comment section, let me know what you think down below. Let me know what you think about the win. Were you impressed with Jinshenko? Were you impressed with Trossard, Jesus, Havertz, um, Gabriel and Saliba? Looks good to see the continuation of that good partnership we have at the back with Ben White as well. And with David Ray, who look really, really solid as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we're solid. It looks like we're confident. And it looks like we're ready going into another massive season for Arsenal Football Club. So, let me know in the comment section down below what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and help me on the road to 1,000 subscribers. We're so close to this goal. I have daily Arsenal content on this channel almost every single day, whether it be player comparisons, player reviews, post-match reviews, pre-match um, reviews and um, breakdowns and analysis as well. Everything Arsenal related and United States men's national team content is also here on this channel. So if you like anything you see on this channel, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and join the family as we're on that road to that goal. Now, like I said, thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'll catch you guys in the next one.